Hello, I'm Tim Clemmer, Head of Open Banking for Enterprise Engineering, and today's topic is API certification. What is it, and why do you need it? So let's first talk about what API certification involves, what it entails. EI has developed a comprehensive, thorough program for certifying APIs, soup, soup to nuts. We've concentrated on the standards, FDX, FAPI, et cetera. And it starts with OAuth testing, testing the tokenization, testing the life cycle of a refresh token, all the way down to thorough analysis of the JSON responses, ensuring the structure is correct, the data is correct. Everything has been mapped correctly. Uh, we've gone through a thorough use case analysis or all the financial products covered, date ranges and paging algorithms, is everything working up to spec, up to snuff. And when it's all over, when we're at the point where we can certify and put our imprimatur on it, you then have a piece of paper that you can feel comfortable with going around to any and all partners in the industry and, and waving this piece of paper and saying, hey, I have been certified for FDX, FAPI, what have you, and I am ready to integrate with you and implement um, my API with you and get you off of screen scraping, get us moving, let us become partners, etc." This is the value of the certification process. So the million dollar question now is, now that I know what certification is, why do I need it? Well, the fact of the matter is building APIs is complicated. It's very complicated. And if you think about it, we are a financial institution. You're opening ports up to your infrastructure and you're allowing external entities to come in and take your client's data and go do things with it. So you need to have a lot of control over all this. You've got to know everything, every step of the way, what's going on. You need control over how they're coming in, who's coming in, and you've got to make sure that you know who these partners are and that there's only one way for a partner to come in and prove who they are via tokenization and security and stuff. And you have to ensure that your partners know how to deal with the data securely, that they are dealing with the data securely, and that there's accessibility. So at a very high level, there's some very complicated concepts going on here that you need to be aware of in order for that your API program to be successful. And too often, we've come into a bank and we're acting as a QA team really for their API. And the first thing that we find is the wrong groups have been making critical decisions about the API. IT was making business decisions and deciding what enumerated values it was going to supply to the API for account types and transaction types. And none of those values agreed with the spec. But it was easier for IT to do it that way and it saved them some time. Business came in and started making decisions that adversely affected security and performance and opened up OAuth and said, you know, let the tokens last for three years. It's like, are you crazy? You can't do that. So <clears throat> these are some of the things that we come in and we've, you know, thoroughly go through and make sure that you haven't made wrong decisions that will adversely affect you. And we're trying to make sure that you stay out of the headlines, the negative headlines in the press. You don't want mistakes when you're dealing with APIs. Next, you know, have all the use cases been considered? This is a tricky one. So if you're a full service bank and you have wealth management and banking and checking, um, does your API support all of the different financial products? And we've come in a couple of times with certain banks and they said, oh, yeah, no. Well, we've got banking credit cards working now. And it's like, well, what about loans? And what about wealth management, investment accounts? Oh, yeah. Loans are nine months away. And investment accounts, well, we're hoping to do that next year. It's like, well, 
I can't certify you because only half your financial products are are done. And what's happening is right now the the fintechs are coming in and screen scraping you and they get all of your account types. They get all the data. So why would they want to come in now with your API and get only half the data? That does them no good. So we have to wait until you're ready and your API is ready before we can certify you. Then I do want to raise an issue here, and this is critical, and it's how good is your test data? And way too often we've gone in and been so underwhelmed uh, how these financial institutions have been testing themselves and what type of test data they have. And it just turns out that, you know, I, I do a test on a debit, and so all debits I can consider done. I've done a test on a fee, all fees have been considered done. It doesn't work that way. You need lots and lots of data and lots and lots of different nuances in that data to be able to be certified. It's one of the great, th it's one of the most easiest things that gets overlooked when banks think they're ready to be certified, that their total lack of comprehensive test data. And what happens is we end up going live and we break when they don't have the test data. I will throw this out one quick little hint. Um, and we've seen this in the past. If you start working with just one major FinTech partner to implement a standard API, just be careful. There may be times when they recommend you doing things, ways that make it easier for them, but maybe not ways that make you certifiable. Um, so it's just something to check. Um, third party review, lastly, it's just, it's just going to ensure that your API is going to work and it's going to produce some business value for you. And really the w major reason why you ha you need API certification, think about it. It's the same reason why you don't grade your own final exam. If you did, everybody would get 100 and no one would understand ever what mistakes they were making and what's buried inside their testing. So we've just did a quick review of what certification is, what it entails and why you need it. I hope you found this informative and thanks so much for listening.